everyone. Hope you're having a beautiful Sunday. Um, I've literally been sitting here for 10 minutes deciding whether to go live or not and it's been on my radar all day and I decided to just go for it. So, <laughs> hello. Like I said, I hope you're having a beautiful Sunday. I decided to come on today and talk a little bit about fear and as it relates, hi Stephanie, how are you? Um, fear as it relates to a lot of things as well as give you some super moon insight. Um, it happened at its prime this morning, but we're feeling a lot um, energy wise right now. Not only with the super moon in Gemini, that is, well, this is the only time it happened this year, and then Mercury has gone into retrograde. So, there's a lot, that's a lot. We're gonna see kind of what it's bringing. So we're gonna start with the serious yet not so serious fear of mine, which leads into a lot of other things. So my biggest fear, one of them, one of the, it was like my childhood biggest fear that's more or less carried on today um, is sparkles. <laughs> so I know, it's weird. And something that I didn't really like to share publicly, slash I still don't. Um, and it's weird, guys. It's really weird. But one of my biggest fears is sparkles. And a lot of you are thinking, what does that even mean? And honestly, let me just give you a brief background into my childhood. So what this meant is that people couldn't come into my room or my sacred space, sacred childhood space, if they had sparkles on them. Their shirts, um, at the time when I'm talking about this, people really weren't wearing makeup yet, so makeup wasn't a big deal. Um, it was mostly clothing. And at the time, Limited 2 was really popular, and Limited 2 sold a lot of sparkly stuff, on top of the fact that I shopped at Limited 2. So, what this also meant is that when my mom would take me there and she'd make me try things on, the floors were covered in sparkles. And I would stand on to the chairs that were in the um, dressing rooms to try things on so that I didn't get sparkles on my clothes or my socks or myself, heaven forbid. Um, so I would be super weird. I would touch things to make sure the sparkles don't come off. And then if they do, I'd lick them to get rid of them. Like that was the most immediate way to get rid of the sparkles. Um, it's just, it was weird guys. And it still is. Um, so why, why did I have this fear? I can't tell you. Um, but it was bizarre. So no sparkle clothing. Um, and it, you know, it led to some trauma. Kids thought that it would be fun to throw sparkles at me in art class. Um, you know who you are because you're friends with me on Facebook and you'll probably watch this at some point. Um, and, um, you know, my grandma thought it was just hilarious and would, to this day, still sends me cards for the holidays covered in sparkles. Um, or she'd people would wrap my Christmas presents in sparkly wrapping paper, as in like, I had to overcome this giant fear in order to get this gift at the end of the tunnel. Um, so with that being said, okay, I had a sphere of sparkles and it still kind of exists today. Um, today I have this, it's driving me crazy. Can I, oh, okay. So I, um, I bought this, you could call it kimono and it's covered in, gold and stars and I had been planning on wearing this for the super moon and so when I bought it was it got it at Nordstrom Rack and you know of course I rubbed it to make sure the sparkles don't come off and you don't think they do so I got dressed this morning and I was sitting on my couch and I like saw sparkles on the couch and I was like that's weird like this must be from all my new makeup stuff like not a big deal I let it go. I've come a long way. Um, but then I got into the car and I took my backpack off and the back of it was covered in gold sparkles. And I was like, okay, all right. 
you know, we're, we're gonna leave it, it's fine. We've come a long way, we're, we're leaving it. So I've been really good today. I've worn this all day long. Um, I love it too much to, um, to just take it off because the sparkles come off. So how does this relate to anything? It doesn't, does it? Um, I just felt this overwhelming need to come on to a live video and share with the world that I have the weirdest effing fear of sparkles. Plus, my brother and sister have been using these videos as like sheer entertainment. So I figured I'd continue to give them something to be entertained by. So where this comes in is with my new um, limelight business. I have continued to have to, sorry, this is driving me crazy, um, to have to deal with sparkles. And it's been that way for makeup for a long time. And one of the reasons I didn't wear makeup for the longest time was because of sparkles. Um, one of the reasons I hated getting dressed up for homecoming and whatnot is because I'd go with my friends and we'd get our makeup done at the mall and I'd just leave covered in sparkle dust. Sparkle dust is just as bad as real sparkles. And so then when I started getting into makeup in different colors, I would try to find like the least sparkly makeup possible. That was like almost like a matte that wouldn't necessarily leave a sparkling glow. It would just leave a sense of color. Um, and with that being said, I really don't like to put eyeshadow on um, because that is the source of sparkles. So when I joined Limelight um, or started using Limelight, let's put it that way, um, I was using all of the non-sparkle material foundation, um, the eyeshadow color that I use for my brows um, has no sparkle remnants in it, whereas the old one I did, I used it did, which was weird because then I'd have like these like weird sparkly eyebrows and that's not natural. Um, the powder, even the blush doesn't really have a, I use a, the matte blush that doesn't really have a remnants of sparkles in it. So needless to say, I stay further away from sparkles than most. So with that being said, I recently got the Bare Metals collection, um, which was new and um, wonderful for the holiday season. And I had a moment where I was like, okay, A, why did I get this? And B, will I ever use it? So I thought to myself, okay, we'll see. So I used it on Friday night for the Game of Awe party that I went to. And you can see that picture on my post or on my timeline. Um, and then I... Um, I don't normally get dressed up on Sunday. I really don't like getting dressed up on Sundays. Um, Sundays are a day for self-care and relaxation, so looking like this is not a Sunday goal of mine. However, I had planned to get dressed up for the super moon um, as a day to just celebrate the new energy that's coming into my life. So I got dressed up for the day. I even had to tell people that this morning my roommate... Um, and his friend came down this morning, and he's not going to like that I just said that, but came down this morning, and they're like, oh, why do you look so dressed up? I was like, I'm dressed for the day, people. Like, and I'm really not that dressed up. I just, they just don't normally see me dressed up, slash there's not really a girl in the house, so, except for me. So, I got dressed for the day. So, with this new Beer Metals palette, we have, I mean, everything is shimmery. I mean, that's what it comes down to. It's a palette of more or less neutral colors that um, are used to enhance the eye with shimmer and sparkle and pizzazz. As you can see here, you can't really see because I'm still working on my lighting people, but bear with me here. So I used three different colors from the Bare Palette to create this look. And then again, usually use matte colored lipstick um, for the look to avoid sparkles. So I have on one of the Onyx Collections colors, but unfortunately it's sold out, so I'm not gonna tell you, but there's only one sold out, so if you really wanna look, you can. And then the Signature Jeweled Lip Gloss. Lip Gloss, which is also great because it has a mirror. I haven't really taken the 
or have I taken it off? Oh, it came off, but it has a mirror on the other side. But there are sparkles, people, and I used it to cover this today. So overcoming all fears one day at a time. So in my step into the beauty business, we have decided to continue to face my, spark, my fear of sparkles and overcoming them one day at a time. And as I shared today, it was with the Signature Jeweled Lip Gloss and the Bare Metals Collection, both of which are beautiful products and enhance any look. Um, so I'll keep you up to date with how this is going sparkle-wise and um, what products I continue to decide to try based on their sparkle factor. So next thing on the agenda is another fear. So this is a little bit more serious one. Um, as I had mentioned, or as some of you maybe saw on my timeline, I went to an event on Friday night. Um, it was the Game of Awe launch party. Tiffany Josephs has, is launching, it's coming in January, um, a program to really get in touch with your inner child, taking you to different lands where you have to face some of these fears and figure out what different things mean to you and how they show up in your life and how you address them. So, um, where am I, where was I going with that? Oh, so one of the questions in the game, so there was a game board, we had teams, was what, oh my god, this is going to drive me crazy. It's the only problem with like curly, heavy hair is that all the, well, the front pieces don't curl. And I don't spend most of my days trying to curl them. So, back to what I was saying. Is that... Um, one of the questions was with one color, draw your fear. And I, so I thought about it and I was like, I don't like, I grabbed orange because I really just hate orange. I don't fear orange. I just hate orange. And so I hate fear. So that's why I grabbed orange. And then I thought about it and I was like, fear is nothing. So for me, Fear is the idea of nothingness and there being nothing left or nothing for me and that, um, hi Savannah, and that I can't, there will be nothing for me to overcome or to face. So I drew, so I didn't draw anything except I drew an orange frame around the piece of paper because I felt like I needed to obey the rules and have a color. Um, but it was interesting because Tiffany pointed out that I had drawn a frame that I confined my fear. Um, there was another person there that just held up a blank sheet of paper, but I had decided to confine my fear, which was interesting. And I still haven't quite figured out what that means yet. But so the idea was that fear is nothing. Fear is that I have nothing or I have nothing to strive for. Um, leading me to kind of where I'm at in my life right now. Um, a lot of what I'm feeling revolves around that fear as I am starting something new such as Limelight and transitioning into um, a new full-time job or trying to transition into a new full-time job and figuring out what industry that is and what I want that to look like. Um, so yeah, so last but not least, this is not going to be short, so prepare yourselves, um, is how this all ties into the supermoon that is today. So the supermoon is in Gemini. Hi, Jen. Um, and there's a lot of astrological activity happening right now. Gemini um, and its sign is, a, um, is for strong communication. So there's a lot of communication that's going to happen with this super moon, but a lot of it needs to happen within. So what's cool for me about what I just shared is that now, not only being the last month of 2017, is a great time for all of us to turn inwards and to look at it and to think about, okay, what did we accomplish in 2017? What went well? What didn't go well? What do we want from all of this? What do we want moving forward into 2018? As some of us, you know, whether you do New Year's resolutions, um, whatever energy you want to take into 2018, 
now is a great time to turn in words and to face a lot of it, the good and the bad. So um, with this super moon, we've entered the second chakra, which for those of you who are not familiar with chakras is the sacral chakra, um, which is the root. Um, so starting at the bottom up, um, the root of pleasure, enjoyment, and creativity. So for me, as I turn inward um, during this super moon and during this these next few weeks, um, I'm really looking and to what brings me these three things, pleasure, enjoyment, and creativity. Um, and how, what are my fears surrounding them? What, um, what can I do? And to moving forward to embrace them more. And how am I going to utilize them um, in my coming adventures? So, um, with that being said, there's a lot of healing that also needs to take place. So, we're turning inward. We're looking at um, focusing on our self-identity. Self identity. Um, how do we shut down? How do we turn off? What's our relationship with ourselves? Um, and how can we communicate that? What's our, what are our inner beings telling us in order to shift all these different things? Woo, a lot. Okay. Um, and I spent the last couple of days trying to sit with this, um, before the super moon today and be like, and like trying to figure it out and sort it out and make lists and manifest different things. And I'm not saying that it was all for nothing, but I'm also saying that I realized that I needed to sit with it. And I needed to be still with it. And I'm, that's not something I'm good at, um, considering the fact that um, it was hard enough sitting around trying to recover from my surgery. That is just not a skill I have, is sitting still with something and letting it be and letting it manifest and letting it come to me. I want to go to it and I want to figure it out. And I want to be as you know effective and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I just want to make it happen basically as soon as possible. I'm ready to change and I want it to change now. So I've realized that I need to just stop and I need to sit with it. Um, there's a lot of heightened emotions that we might find with not only the super moon, um, in Gemini as well as Mercury in retrograde right now. So that is why it's even more important to sit with all the emotions that are coming up inside so that we don't exert them outwards, whether it be taking out on people, making rash decisions, um, or so on and so forth. So what are we focusing on? So let me just sum that up for us real quick. So super moon in Gemini, Mercury in retrograde, the last few, the last, I mean, I guess we, there's still basically a whole month. The last month of 2017, we are focusing on us. What are we, what do we want for 2018? What is the soul, our soul telling us? And how are we going to channel pleasure, enjoyment, and creativity in all the senses for the next year? So that we can be an even greater version of ourselves and continue to grow. Um, I know for me, that's what I want to do. As I want to keep growing... And there's a lot of transitions. Life always hands us traditions, whether or traditions, transitions, whether it's a job transition, um, a living situation transition, uh, whether it's to a new state or just a new place in the city or a different city um, in your state. There's just so many tr transitions. There's always something that comes up and you're just like, what? Can I just get a break for a second? Um, I feel like that's what I was asking myself for a lot of 2017 is can I catch a break between I've moved way too many times this year, hip surgery, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I kept asking, give me a break. I've been asking for the universe to give me a break, but instead, like you said, for the last month, I'm going to give myself a break and I'm going to turn inward and just keep pointing inward <laughs> and root down in my sacral chakra and figure out, not figure out, I'm not figuring it out. I'm going to sit still and let meditate. I can't quite do yoga yet. Um, but turn inward and listen to what I need 
um, and what is calling me to embrace all these different things. Okay, I think I hit, I hit the um, main parts of that. So something for us to keep in mind, um, and then I'm going to do a goddess reading, is that we are powerful beyond measure. Marianne Williamson said it, everybody says it, we as human beings are powerful beyond measure. But as I said, um, in my process of turning inwards, my recommendation for everyone else is to trust the process and to trust your heart. Um, this is not a month to be logical. Um, that hit me hard because I like to be super logical. This, um, we're sitting with our emotions, we're trusting the process, and we're trusting our heart. Um, that's hard to do, but that is my recommendation as we finish the month out. So, that being said, I am going to pull three cards out of my Goddess Oracle. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with oracles, oracles are a little bit different than tarot cards. Tarot cards have a specific number um, of cards in each deck. They're more structured, um, and they're a little bit older in their tradition. Oracle cards can use anything from goddesses to fairies to angels to animals um, to help turn inwards and to think about different things. Um, there's not really any rules. Um, I get to be the game maker in my oracle readings. Um, so yeah, so there is a spread that I prefer to do with my oracle reading and it's called the Yoni spread. Um, for those of you who don't know, Yoni means power, which is again, really rooted in that sacral chakra. So we're tying everything together. Um, and what this Yoni spread is doing is it's helping us heal. Um, our feminine self and there's three parts to that so the first is how we are going to nourish the wholeness in our wise woman the second is nourishing wholeness in our emotional bodies and the third is nourishing wholeness in our sexuality so I've shuffled my cards and I'm going to spread them out I'm going to pick three and I the intention of this drawing I like to set an intention before every one of my drawings, um, or one of my spreads, is not only for myself, usually obviously I do these for myself, but my intention is to, I still have two people watching and that is wonderful. Thank you for watching and staying in there. So um, the intention of this spread is for all of you out there who are watching, who are listening, who are feeling the emotional effects of the astrological activity, um, there's even way more going on than I even shared. And that the three cards pulled can assist each and every one of you in figuring out and sitting with what you want to come for 2018 and how you are going to embrace your feminine power. Okay, so there's my one card. There's my two card. And there's my three card. Okay, so as I mentioned, the first card is um, nourishing the wholeness of our wise woman. So the card that I pulled for that one is Hathor or pleasure. So um, I still use my book as a reference to kind of give um, an overview of what this card means. Um, so this is interesting considering the fact that I had mentioned the sacral chakra. Um, part of it is embracing pleasure. So how are we going to um, embrace the wholeness of our wise woman? Pleasure. Comes back to slap you in the face and say you can't ignore it even if you wanted to. Um, and keep in mind that pleasure comes in a lot of different forms. So for this it says that Hathor is here to tell us that wholeness lies in connecting with what brings you pleasure and experiencing pleasure. Have you been taught that pleasure is forbidden, something sinful or evil? Are you so busy fulfilling your commitments that pleasure is relegated to the bottom of your list? Do you deny pleasure in order to get work done? Stop. Time to change that. Pleasure relieves stress and relaxes you and refreshes you. It's the body's way of expressing health and vitality. Pleasure is the oil that keeps you lubricated and lush. There you go. Heather says that since you have chosen to be here in a physical body, as we all are, you might as well enjoy it. 
Don't wait for others to fulfill this need. Plan to give yourself pleasure daily and you'll find satisfaction dancing with life. So for all of those that are only thinking in a purely sexual mindset right now, um, keep in mind that pleasure is anything from a bath at the end of a long day with some rose oil in it or a bath bomb to going and going to a movie by yourself. That's on my list of things to do this week. Um, I want to see Lady Bird really badly and I'm going to take myself to the movies this week to see it. Um, so it doesn't mean coming home at the end of the day and doing what you need to do. Um, it's way more than that. So keep that in mind. Um, that pleasure has many different meanings and it's not a shameful thing um, in any of its meanings at all. So wholeness in our wise women pleasure. So second, wholeness in our emotional body. I picked Kali, which is fear. I love when I pull these cards and so much that I was talking about or thinking about, um, in regards to whether I do these on full moons, super or full moons, new moons, um, and different while I'm experiencing different things in life, how they all tie in. Um, it's very rare that I get a card and I'm like, what? And if I do, that it really does mean something and I need to figure out what it means and what I'm avoiding. So, wholeness in our emotional being. Fear. All right, let's see what Kali has to tell us about this one. Kali's begun to dance her dance into our lives to tell us it's time to face our fears. All that is lurking ominously, either buried deep in your inner darkness or close by, needs to be stared at in the eye and brought to light. Are your fears serving you by warning you about dangerous places, things, or people? Or do your fears prevent you from dancing your dance, living your life, and creating with creation? Kali comes to tell you that your dance is needed as a part of the whole dance of create, creation. Wholeness is nurtured when you reclaim the pieces of yourself that you've given over to fear. Most fears are formless. By naming and witnessing these fears, we gain power. Wholeness is created when we learn to acknowledge our fears and walk through them. So my whole, my whole focus, more or less, of this live video was fear, is fear. So how, am I gonna, how are we going to nurture our emotional bodies for the rest of the year? It's going to be by facing our fears and embracing them and not giving them power over us because as it said, they're, they're nameless and they're formless. And as long as we don't give them a shape, they can't do anything to us. All right, last card for embracing our sexuality. Interesting is, I can't even say this, but it's synthesis. So let me, let me show you the card. It's pretty powerful. Very nature oriented, Woo. nature oriented. Um, I'm gonna figure out how to say it properly. Gil, Gilpatis, it's Gilpatis. So, Gilpatis, meaning synthesis, glides into your life. I keep using different pronouns, just bear with me. Um, to tell, I'm gonna use the plural. Glides into our lives to tell us the way to wholeness lies in synthesis. It is time to bring all the divergent parts, all the opposing pieces together into one whole person. At this time, your life, in your life, you may be engaged in conflict or opposition. Now, we must resolve it and create union. Perhaps we are dissipating energy life for, and our life force in too many directions or have hundreds of irons in the fire. This is the time to find the common thread that will serve our needs the best way. Gelfidus says that by learning to listen to all the different pieces, all the divergent parts of us, this can include families, communities, partners, we can hear and give what is needed to create wholeness. Wholeness is created when all the parts are honored and listened to. When all the parts are brought together and synthesized into a whole, the greatest gifts of the whole often lie in the most disparate pieces. I never really loved this card. But it might be because I do a hundred different things at one time, all the time. And it shows up every once in a while to tell me to stop and that I have too much going on and I need everything to come together. Um, which I think, as I had mentioned earlier, really ties into all of this is that um, in order um, to embrace and to find wholeness in our sexuality, which is also 
just our feminine power is that we need to stop giving our power over to so many different sources. Um, and I can tell you right now, I've been doing that for months and I am working on saying no more and not committing to a hundred different things, a hundred different jobs. Um, but I know that's still something that I need to work on. So for you, I recommend figuring out what are you doing too much of? What are you over committing to? And what needs to happen? What all of all the pieces that you've spread out? Um, what do you need to let go of in order to kind of, I would say, I'd imagine, imagine it as like a little tiny puzzle and there's just a few pieces and those need to come together and they fit perfectly together. And that's the synthesis that, um, that you need are those three pieces. Instead of there being a hundred pieces in a puzzle, you only need a three piece puzzle. And even though it might sound easy, which those are easy, but ignore that part of it, is that that creates the synthesis um, that we're looking for. Okay, so thank you for joining. Thank you for all those who watched. My phone is on low battery now, so oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna, oh, no, it's not gonna let me do that. Hold on, people. Okay, um, low battery, but I think that's about it. So you've learned today about my weird fear of sparkles, um, the fear of nothingness, meaning a lot more than it sounds, what the super moon and mercury and retrograde is bringing us for the rest of the year, and I encourage you, um, if you're into it, to sit with the three cards that I pulled. Um, Hather for pleasure, for the wholeness in our wise woman. Kali for fear, embracing the wholeness of our emotional body. And Gilfidus for um, wholeness in our feminine power or sexuality. I encourage you to sit with those, figure out what they mean to you and what you need to sit with and manifest and call in for to have to complete the rest of the year and go into 2018 with a killer sense of power um, and self-confidence and badassery for lack of a better word thank you so much for joining next time i will post that when i'm actually going live that's maybe more planned, so in case that's what people like. Um, I'm still pretty new to this, but I appreciate it. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your Sunday night, um, and I will see you all soon. That would have been so great had this button worked. And we are finishing now. <laughs>